This, folks, was another proper game of rugby. Punch for punch throughout. Bath through the last one and through to Twickenham. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Here with you to the end of the season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, in the preview, I questioned if Sale would have enough energy following what they've been through in recent weeks. They 100% did. I questioned if they would play a pragmatic style rather than trying to run the ball. And they definitely didn't. Sale moved the ball well in the opening minutes and got tons of gain line success. However, it was Bath that the score in the points. Russell with a penalty and then a brilliant try by Ted Hill. When Bath just, they just passed the ball to the free man. Just one pass, just held their feet, got to the outside. Hill went flying off down the touchline. There was a ruck there. Finn Russell then just ran at the space. He was looking to go wide and then realised there was a massive hole directly in front of him. And that is absolute quality. Just play what you see. He went through. Momentum gained. There was a penalty advantage. But then a brilliant chip by Ben Spencer. Sent Hill over in the corner for 8-0. It was absolutely magic and real quality Bath play. But as I said... Sale were really playing the majority of the rugby. They were happy to move the ball around within the middle third as well. I didn't expect to see that. I thought they were trying to get, would try and put pressure on Bath and get territory and then go from there. But they were moving the ball. They were moving it well. They had lots of options. They looked fluent at attack and they were getting good gain line success whenever they carried. And that led to a driving mall try for Ben Curry getting over as they just kept going towards the front, just rolling towards the front of the line out uh, with Curry getting over. And as I say, Sale at this point were looking good. But Bath got an entry after a fantastic 50-22. Uh, a brilliant carry. I mean, it's the classic... Um, set up really Ollie Lawrence off the end of the line out not even a rock happened he managed to get the offload back to Spencer who then hit um, the number eight whose name is escaping me at the moment write it in the comments down below uh, who charged on and on and on without his afro that guy you know the one uh, and then Urbano picked up to score the try for 15-5 27 minutes it's one of those things Dugdale gets penalised for head on head now, in my opinion, these things happen. It probably happens in most rocks. At least one in two, these kind of things. For me, this is the TMO going to the level of detail that's not necessary. There was nothing in it. Um, well done, Luke Pierce, for just giving a penalty. I feel like he had to give the penalty, have it having been raised by the TMO, and there was a head-on-head -head contact. He couldn't ignore that then. Anyway, Russell kicked it, 18-5. But then Ted Hill made an error at the kickoff. So he's one of those real tw tricky ones. He's running towards the touchline. You never want to be running towards the touchline on a kickoff. And he tried to catch it, realised he was going to go into touch. So sort of threw it in field. What was the worst case scenario? If he let it go, it was going to bounce out and it'd be a Bath line out. That feels like such a loss, but it's really not. Like you're still getting the ball back, probably. It's, you know, it's still in your territory, which is the same as if you caught it anyway. I think in situations like that, you've just got to say, OK, it's not a favourable situation. Let the ball go out. Following that bit of play, there was a really uh, um, wild bit of play where Tom O'Flaherty got the ball through a miss pass well behind the line. This was on a kick return. It looked like it could have been intercepted. The sale player just let it go, uh, which led to Carpenter almost getting around the outside, but he threw it back inside. Amazing bit of play. But even better from Bath defensively because they counter aggressively and turned that ball over. This was wild and helter-skelter. And actually, a lot of the game was like this. It was really entertaining. And, you know, a lot of it unstructured, which I loved. It was brilliant. Sale got the net score, though. All this Bath kind of lead was just disappearing. Tommy Taylor with another mall try. It was almost a carbon copy of the first one for 18-12. Sale got another penalty as well for 18-15 at the break and what was a big lead for Bath suddenly had disappeared however the game as a whole I think it, the scoreline was pretty reflective Bath hadn't played a huge amount but got good reward for when they were down in territory Sale probably dominating territory and position possession looking good when they're moving the ball yet behind on the scoreboard so very tight game and really it was looking like it could have gone either way into the second half at this point and into the second half, 
Bano Urbano was doing an amazing job on Harper. Uh, he was dominant, um, and Harper's been scrumming really well recently. So this is a big, big scalp for Urbano. He's getting scrum penalties, also playing well for Sale, this was. And if they'd end up being the winning team, I sense he might have got them out of the match because Carpenter at fullback was absolutely regal in the air, almost Freddie Stewart-esque, really lively on the feet as well, um, always looking for a counter-attack, always choosing good options. I thought he was outstanding and maybe the best player on the pitch on the day. Ford knocked over a penalty after a scrum penalty against Urbano this time, uh, having said he'd been scrumming really well for 18 all. And then onto the pitch, the big moment, Tom Curry comes charging on, looking like a man possessed in a headband. And you could see it was kind of down over one eyebrow. I reckon he's been so desperate to prove his fitness this week that he's cut himself he's either headbutted one of his teammates or a wall or Alex Sanderson himself just to prove that he's fit and available and keen obviously so Tom Curry and he came on with some power as well I mean it was like he'd never been away some of his carries it's just different gravy he's just a machine uh, however it was Bath who got the net score 21-18 after a penalty but Sale hits straight back Bath dropped the ball Finn Russell fizzed the pass at someone and it, maybe it wasn't for that person. I can't remember who it was, but there was a couple of times I thought where Russell's passing was a little bit lacking in empathy or not quite the right weight for where it was supposed to be. He wasn't super fluent today. Um, anyway, the ball was dropped. Tommy Taylor did a great job to move the ball to space early. Carpenter got ball back inside and this was the class moment. This was where the try was really created as far as I'm concerned because there was nowhere for him to go. He caught the ball, dropped it on his foot, chipped it forward in one movement and that left a flarity with a race with a second row to get the try and 23-21. Importantly, the conversion was missed. Uh, shortly afterwards, uh, Tom Curry properly announced himself to the to the game as Josh Bayliss wandered into midfield. Uh, now on for Alfie Barbary. That's who the carry was earlier. Thank you. Um, and Tom Curry and Ben Curry went for the tackle at the same time. But as is typical, Tom Curry got there first and smashed Bayliss back so hard. Um, and this led to a kind of like a really muddled period in the game around the 60, 65 minute mark. There was lots of turnovers, lots of penalty penalties. It was a bit messy. Most of it was played in the middle third. Neither team really wanting to, you know, go all out for the win here at this point. They just want to stay in the game. We see it a lot. I mention it a lot because it happens in most games when it's tight. During this time, Russell got a huge long range penalty for 24-23, kicking really well. However, he then missed one, um, which was it was a decent distance out, you know, not, not a gimme, but it led to a brilliant right-footed kick from Ben Spencer, who just nudged it down into the corner, and George Ford tried to play it, he tried to catch it, but missed it, and it ended up going out for a Bath line out, and this was the moment of the game. This was when the game was sealed because Bath went for the driving mall in front of their terrace, in front of the screaming fans. And this was a proper man test of a mall. Bath caught it, set it straight down. No mauling, no peeling, none of that. And despite being repelled by Sale's mall twice earlier, I think, and Sale getting two mall tries, Bath just went for it. And I love that. This mall was n never going anywhere. Like, it wasn't going to spin... People were just in there and then they started getting spat out of the back as they lost feet and stuff like that. The Bath backs came in and they just managed to keep it moving straight over the line. And when the try scorer popped up off the ground, I personally went, Who? who's that? And then I realised it was Niall Annett without his scrum cap. I don't think I've ever seen him without his scrum cap before. So that's what Niall Annett looks like, everybody. And it was such a crucial moment of the game right towards the end. And then the absolutely crucial conversion, making it eight-point game, 31-23. <sighs> Sale went for it. Fair play to them. They really went for it. There was some wild play in the last five minutes. People trying to move the ball to space, just trying to find a gap, anything, keeping the ball alive. Bath got the ball back a couple of times and kicked it long. Um, it was wild. It was brilliant. But that wildness was finished, absolutely ended by Ted Hill, who slammed into Sam James. Sam James, who, I mean, this pretty much sums up his sale career, really. 
always offering himself, always available. Unfortunately, he was the only option for George Ford, which made it a really easy read for Ted Hill, who took him out with some style. The game was played out. Bath looked after the ball full time. Van Graan crying at the final whistle. I mean, that is some emotion from a coach to win a semi-final. That's an interesting one for me. Um, I wonder. I wonder if he like how much like emotional energy he personally put into this game. Um, a real, yeah, very interesting moment. That I would say that Bath were not at their best today. They, they had moments of fluidity, they had moments of, of real quality, but they really weren't at their fluid best. Sale were combative, they really moved the ball well, and I thought Sale had, actually had a really good performance. However, Bath grabbed the points when they were available, and they rightfully and deservedly get their spot at Twickenham to face Northampton Saints. This was another banger of a game. I loved it, but what do you think? Anything down in the comments below? Any big moments you think I missed that were really important? Any players that you think were outstanding that I didn't talk about? I'd love to hear it, and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. Helps other people find it, and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next, and do not forget to get out and play.